Fall decorating continues today on my channel. Hey, it's Becca. Welcome to my channel or welcome back if you happen to join me last week when I decorated our family room for fall. Now today, I know I'm standing in front of a Christmas tree and I know it's not Christmas, but we're gonna decorate this for fall. This has been a tradition for probably 15 or so years and I'm hoping I might encourage one of you to add a fall tree to your home as well. Before I start decorating, I wanted to give you a look at this tree. In years past, I've had a different tree here, a topiary tree, but I got this last year for Christmas and I really like it, especially because of the branches. It's so easy to hang ornaments from them. Now, if this were Christmas, I'd add another strand of lights or two just to really illuminate it. But since it's fall, just the soft ambiance will be perfect. Now, I decided to raise it up off the ground a bit by placing the base into this planter, uh, just so our cats, it's off the ground from our cats. And I just like that it's a very slim tree too. It's perfect for a corner. So I'll link it down below in case you've been looking for a tree like this as well. So the first thing that I'm going to be adding to the tree this year is ribbon. Sometimes I add that last, but I'm gonna do it first this year. And when it comes to ribbon, if I'm gonna use multiple, I love to use a solid and then one with a pattern, see how pretty that is together? Or then I'll bring in a stripe as well. So I have a solid, a pattern, I'm sorry, a solid, a pattern, and a stripe or a plaid. Or I also have this. I love that waffle texture and the burlap that just says fall to me. But this year I've decided I'm just gonna go with one ribbon and I think it's going to be this very narrow plaid. Once I get my ribbons done, then I'm gonna add my topper. And I like doing my topper first because basically I'm just shoving things down into the tree and if I have my ornaments in place, that might disrupt their placement. So for the tree this year, I picked up a few of these, Will is this willow? Uh, it's not wheat, willow. And then I love the color. I used some of this in our family room. It's like that burnt orange. And then I'll also be adding in feathers. So to me, this just has a very natural fall look. I might add a few mustard stems or picks as well, but if I don't do it in the topper, I'll definitely do it throughout the tree. I'll show you some of the picks I'll be using. I've had these for a few years. They're from Michaels, but I love their muted color. And all I do is just place it right into the tree. It just rests very easily on your, on your branch. So I have that one. I have this one. It's a different color orange, but I love that it has the husk and the little berries and a leaf. I also have these with the little pumpkins and I like that this is very bendable. So if you need it to be a really good, you know, filler, it works very well. Same with this acorn pick. I love the detail on it. You have the little pine cones, acorns, leaves, and this is really pretty all spread out coming out of your tree as well. I also have a couple of these little burlap leaves. They're fun to just have coming out of the tree and they have a little wire stem, so they're easy to attach. And then I might, it depends, I have a few of these that I'm not gonna be using elsewhere. So what I may end up doing is just clipping them with wire cutters so that I have smaller pieces coming out of the tree for movement, but We'll see, that will be something that I'll add at the last minute. As for ornaments, I have some of these. I love, again, that burnt or rusty orange. And then I picked these up at Hobby Lobby not too long ago. I love that matte color. And then I used to have four of these and I broke a couple. So I only have two, but I'm gonna add them anyway, just for a little bit of bling. And then I have a little bit of whimsy. I have these and these. And then some years I add, I have a whole bag of 
family pictures that I'll tuck into the tree. I'll see how it goes this year. If I have enough room, I'll add them back, but I've had these so long and they need a little bit of TLC, so I might redo all of them and have them ready for next year. So like I mentioned earlier, the first thing I'm gonna do is add my ribbon. Now I like to do it in somewhat of a diagonal pattern, just going down the tree. I'll start up at the top and again, I'm just going to make a loop, twist, make a loop, and then I'm gonna pinch it right here. You can add floral wire, but my branch is going to act as my floral wire. I'm sorry if you can't see this one, but when I work down the tree, it'll show better. Now, sometimes I'll go back in and dovetail the end of the ribbon if it's visible. Otherwise, I just try to curl it and take it back into the tree where you can't see it or loop it back into the tree. But I'll go back through and adjust these later, make the bow larger, smaller, just tweak it as necessary. The ribbon is on and I ended up adding the waffle ribbon as well. It's just so natural looking. But the only thing is I didn't have as much, so I only did one loop for that one. I know I need to add another piece down here, but that'll just be too enticing for our kitties, so I'm gonna leave that blank. Now that the ribbon's on, let's add the topper. First thing I'm going to add are these. So I'm just gonna tuck one right down in the front. And I do have a four that I'll have to add towards the back. Sorry, I ended up going back and adding this, but I did that off camera. Now I also added one bush back there, and then I'm gonna add another one to the front. And this is what I love about having a tree in the corner. You can get away with having less material because it's tucked away and you can't really see the back. Then I'm going to add in the feathers, just kind of poking up out of the top. So I went ahead and added one of these just to balance out with that mustard bush up top or stems up top, and then I'll add one here as well. I went ahead and finished the topper off camera. It was just too hard with the angle of the camera to finish it. So I've got my burnt orange, the mustard, feathers, this brownish orange. I brought in my little burlap pieces, which they are on their last leg. I'm not quite ready to retire them. And then I added these to tie in with those. So now that this is done, I can decorate the rest of the tree. When it comes to adding ornaments, I like to start on the inside and work my way out. I feel like it gives your tree just that added bit of dimension. So what I'll do is I try to go in a zigzag pattern. Sorry, it's not going on. Down the tree. I'll show you a better look as soon as I'm done. Hopefully this gives you a better look and you can see how I added the ornaments again at a zigzag pattern all the way down inside just to give that dimension. And I love how they reflect the lights as well. And there's the last one way down there. I'm gonna add the new brown ones I just got from Hobby Lobby. Again, with like a diagonal pattern. Although sometimes I'll go this way, this way, center, and repeat the process. I have some of these, but I don't have a lot. This will just add a little bit of bling. Look how cute these little guys are.
With the ornaments hung, now it's time to place the picks. Now I'm just adding in a few of the burlap leaves that I shared with you earlier. So I ended up adding in a few pictures and I always attach them with these little clips. The clips just add a bit of whimsy and make it casual. And then I ended up cutting up the longer branches that I showed you earlier and just tucked those in randomly. Now I already see a few gaps, but what I like to do is just keep my bin of ornaments and greenery or false stems on hand. So as I see the gaps, I just fill them in. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Hopefully I've encouraged one of you to consider adding a fall tree to your home as well. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.